What's up guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to give you a rare look behind the scenes on how to pick out the best program, work on the best scope that gives you the best opportunity to find bugs and vulnerabilities as a beginner hacker against the competition of thousands of other hackers. How awesome is that? And if you're new to the channel, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab a chair, and enjoy the secret letters of a hacker. Nice camera action. All right guys, let's take a look at this. So here's my hacker one dashboard. I have some already open to talk about. So the programs I like to look at have a huge scope. I don't like to go swimming in a pool with a thousand other dudes when I can go swimming in an ocean with a thousand other dudes. So the US Department of Defense, their scope is any public facing website owned, operated or controlled by the DOD. And that is a huge scope to look at for bugs and vulnerabilities. If you're wondering what websites constitute for the DOD, let me give you a quick look up on that. So any website that's under the Department of Commerce, the Department of Defense, the Department of Energy, Homeland Security, Department of Justice, and so on are all in scope. I like to work on this program. If I end up finding a bug or vulnerability, chances are that I'm always in scope with it. Another program I like to look at is mail.ru. They too also have a huge scope and they also have bounty payouts. Another thing I like to look at when picking a program is seeing what subdomains are available to hunt on. If I don't see any asterisks on a program, I'm probably not going to hunt on them. This helps a lot with reconnaissance and enumeration, and it gives you a better opportunity to find vulnerabilities because they're saying every subdomain is in scope which is great when it comes to hunting on programs with thousands of other hackers because there's a little bit of something for everybody programs that i don't like to hunt on for example verizon now even though they have a huge scope for you to look at this program is a bit strict as far as rules of engagement as a beginner i want to focus on rules of engagement that are very user friendly. We come over here to the directory. We can see all the programs that are available and you can see the launch date, the reports, the bounties and the average bounties paid out. Let's take a look at a scope that I probably wouldn't consider hunting on. As a beginner hunter, I probably wouldn't consider this one because it's too narrow of a focus and it's not broad enough for me to engage in. As you can see, only 17 reports in the last 90 days versus if we go over to this program, they've received over a thousand reports in the last 90 days and their average payout is between 250 and $300. This program is a lot more user friendly for beginner hunters versus a program like this that's only received 17 reports in the last 90 days and the last port resolved was four months ago to me that tells me that this program is pretty hardened so i wouldn't consider it this program here they received 3800 reports in the last 90 days last report resolved was a day ago so chances are there are a ton of bugs on this program because the scope is extremely huge as well as this program, the scope is extremely huge and there's enough room for everybody to get involved. You don't have to go swimming with a bunch of thousand other dudes in a small swimming pool. You can go swimming in the ocean with a thousand other dudes looking for bugs. Seems a lot better than the other programs. So if you're not finding bugs, on the programs you're looking at, maybe take a look at a different program, assess what the scope is about, and then start your reconnaissance. The goal is to get from informative reports that 
have a low to no severity to a report that has either a P1 or P2 because P1s and P2s easily exploitable and give you higher points and bounties. So to recap, pick a program that's user friendly for beginner hackers. Pick a scope that is extremely large because you're going to be hunting in a public space with thousands of other hackers and then make sure the rules of engagement are user friendly as well for beginner hackers. Those three tips in mind, you're going to have a better chance at finding bugs and vulnerabilities on a public platform. Stay tuned to the next video because we're going to be doing a tutorial on subdomain enumeration. So make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video. As always, hack me outside bro, how about that? Thank you.